Hi guys, so it's the end of week 18 of my book challenge, so here I am talking about the book that I've been reading this week, and this week it was The Titan's Curse um, by Rick Ryden, the third book of the Olympian Percy Jackson series. Um, so if you've watched my videos the past couple of weeks, so I'm going to be you know, doing the same formula, um, where I'm just going to talk generally about it and talk a little bit more in depth about certain characters and things I liked and things I didn't like. Um, so you've got a warning right here now that it most likely because of its continuing story I'm going to be revealing some major spoilers and such so you have been warned. So keep watching if, if you if you don't mind being spoiled a bit or if you have read the book obviously you're not going to be spoiled at all but just you know the warning right there out. So uh, the Titan's Curse starts pretty much um, I think it's about three months after the previous um, book um, finished. So Percy's you know, about a new school and all that lot and such. But it's very interesting because this book, it doesn't go over really what he's kind of been doing since the previous summer. Um, it, it goes smack bang into a, um, an action scene where he, he and Beth um, and Talia, who um, was, you know, brought magically to life at the very, very end of the previous book, are going to um, a school to, in, in New York to um find go on a mission basically grove is already there and he's found two demigods um who uh, they're, uh, they're, their parents their they you know their their greek um god parents haven't been revealed yet but they are there they don't know anything about themselves and percy annabeth and talia have come to basically help grover bring them to camp Hathlet. so it's very it, it kind of shifts straight away from the previous um two books in the way that it's structured it's usually you know you get you know Percy talk about what he's been doing and he tends to always be starting off at school and something dramatic happens to him and it does start off in a school but it's not his school um <laughs> so so in that regard it is slightly different but it's very very interesting as well because this one especially again it kind of feels like the ground is constantly shifting you don't know what's going to happen you can't um sense something build you know where where it's going to take you so i really that's what i really like about rick's writing and it, i it does annoy me like i had um in his book challenge already so far this year i've read um the nine books that cassandra clare wrote and they were as you read them you could see very they're very formulated and you can sense what's going to happen and the way that she writes after a while it did great on me rereading it but with Rick's writing, rereading it, I find myself still, even though I've read the books and I know what's going to happen, I still find myself questioning what's going to happen, um, which I, which is really great. I think that's something that he should, um, he should be praised for that that he's has you know he, he's done that, uh, and especially for the target audience who it's for, um, that it's suiting that group of readers but at the same time is satisfying you know an older reader like myself so um i i, I think he should i think he should definitely be praised for for the way in which he's written these books and and also um the greeks you know mythology side of it and everything that i've said this before but especially in this book because there are certain characters certain greek stories that i, I I'd, I'd forgotten that he'd wrote you know that uh, reference to in this book but i remember thinking having re read it that when i originally read it there were some of these i didn't know of i never he even heard of and um i looked into them after i finished re reading the book and it was so clever how he wove these um stories into um into the, the you know these into the, his main arc story and also his characters that he has um created you know all these children of of the greek gods and everything and how things that they do and you know that and things that they say in such are directly in line with those stories it's he's he's done a really great great thing in writing these books i think and if it makes um readers interested in greek mythology then i think that's awesome so yeah well done rick for that now i want to talk a bit in depth about this the overall story of, of this book now i do i did like um this story and rereading it was really great fun um, you know but i think 
it, it was really great fun, but I think the reason why I found it so fun was because in this book especially um, introduces some of my favourite characters in the entire Percy Jackson world. So the actual story-wise, it was good, but I didn't feel like it actually... Uh, it actually went that far with the with the story it kind of feels like you can feel the build up we've we're told in this book that you know the prophecy has to be the child has to be um 16 and everyone believes it's percy and percy says i choose this um uh, this prophecy to be mine so this is going to happen on my 16th birthday but it's two years away so you can you can feel like he, he's sort of taking little steps towards that that point in two years time with the story he's not doing a big leap um so because obviously i say he's got two years to to wait as it were but still it is a bit frustrating um that when you think about it that there's he hasn't really stepped that far forward with the story but i absolutely adore the characters that he introduced in in this especially my one my favorite characters bianca nico uh rachel and Zoe, and I, I really, I was so gutted rereading this book just because of Zoe, what happens to her. I really, really, really liked Zoe, and it's always that case that whenever there's a, a character who I really, really, really like in a book, nine times out of ten, the, the writer goes and kills them off. But then I suppose that's true for every single person who's a fan of a book, regardless of, you know, what it's about. There's always going to be one of those characters. Um, but I, I loved Zoe for... Uh, you know, uh, first of all, she kicks butt when it comes to archery. <laughs> you know, um, I love her integrity, um, her gracefulness, how she kind of does like to um, be in control of everything that surrounds her. But when obviously she's out of control, she doesn't let that overtake her. She she goes right. This situation, let's deal with it. Let's go through. Let's you know get this done, and it totally sucked. And she died. I was so gutted, but I adore that um, she she's become a constellation in the sky. So she she's gone to the stars, and she will live on forever in the stars for everyone. So uh, that is a really beautiful beautiful way to end a story um that she's not going to to be leaving as it were and for the the post um because i'm just reading the the first five olympian series um five book olympian series because they're, they're the only post books i've got but i've read a few of the of the um later heroes of olympian series and uh she is sort of referenced um throughout in those as well so i'm i'm really happy that she isn't just in this book and uh, well and she does pop up the reference to her in the labyrinth um i think yeah or could it be the the fifth one i i, I well perhaps both in the next couple of books she is also referenced there so she appears in this olympia series but she also appears further onwards um as it were in memories and and through her, the stars and everything so i love that that she'll all she always lives on um now nico and bianca i really like them i i i do feel a bit funny about uh <laughs> about them not not in a bad way or anything just because it, it they they are so kind of quirky and i like that you haven't got just you know generic everyone has to be you know like xyz in 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 this book and um, everyone has to think and feel the same and the the and they don't nico um it, he's he well nico and bianca are so close to each other um they have to always protect each other but bianca feels that she has to really protect nico more she's mum um she will do anything for him and um when it, it, and with nico it, i love how high spirited he is how passionate he is about things um he loves fantasy and mythology so then finding out that he's actually half of a you know a, a greek god um completely you know freaks him out but he absolutely loves it and he's asking a million half questions and everything and he's so bright and joyous and i love that about him and he doesn't he doesn't let anything um knock him down apart from um his sister um not 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 saying that you know his sister is horrible to her because she's not what i mean by that is um in the course of this book bianca goes off on a mission and he's very much percy you've got to protect her you've got to look after my sister please look after her um and bianca um 
disappears uh, during the course of it. Well, they everyone believes she's dead, so she has, so Percy has to turn to tell Nico that that she's dead, and he completely flips out. He um, he doesn't know what to do with himself now. Obviously, I've read the latest book, so I know what's happened with to Bianca and such. Um, and everything so it's not necessarily the end of her story but i the way that he reacts is so strong and so powerful it really knocks the hell out of him um so he does have that his weakness is love for his sister um all the demigods have a weakness and that and that's his particular one um and I th I think it's it's really beautiful having a character like that in in a in a book. As I said, not everyone is the same. Not everyone is cook um, cookie cutter um, in their personalities and their thoughts and their feelings. So to have somebody who stands on the outside um, and sees things in a different perspective, I think is fantastic to have and i love I, I i i was grinning the whole time i was reading the chapter um the introduction of rachel she's brilliant i love rachel she she'll reappear in the in the next book um that she is someone who piss just bumps into while he's fighting these skeletons and she can see them and he's like but you're immortal you can't you might then see these and she helps him escape and he, and he asks Zoe about it, and Zoe says, oh, sometimes mortals can see through the mist. It's the way it is, but they're still mortal. But, <laughs> you know, as time goes, oh, we find out that she's not, but she's absolutely brilliant. And she um, she's quite witty, and, and she doesn't take sass from, it, you know, from anyone sort of thing. And uh, I, I love her. I think she's, she's, she rocks. She's absolutely brilliant. Um, now, when it comes to other characters who have already been well established through this story, um, they kind of take a little bit of a back burner in regards to, like, Kieran um, and Mr. D. They, they pop up when needed, but they're not really present. Um, Annabeth is, um, goes missing right at the beginning of the book, uh, and we only really see her through uh, like dreams that Percy is having uh, until, you know, when she gets found in near the end of the book. So Annabeth is pretty much absent for the entire book. So the only characters who we've already been, you know, been well established to who really are in the epicenter of the story are Grover and Percy. And that is very daring to do in the middle of a book series, I think, because you're basically you're having to introduce all of these new characters um, and, you know, still persevere on with the story and everything. Um, but I like that he's allowed that room space as well for him to introduce all of these new characters and how they are going to play forward in the next you know, next couple of books. So um, it's a, it was a gamble, I think, for Rick to do, but he took the gamble, and I think he did really great with it. Um, and uh, yeah, now we're we're also in this book getting Luke um, again. He's kind of like Mister D and and um, and Kieran in that um, he he only really pops up now and then. And he's right right near the end, but you can see that he's changing. He uh, he's still under Kronos's spell, but there are cracks appearing, and it's because Annabeth was there. Um, Annabeth and him were so were so close when they were they were growing up. They grew up at the camp together, and everything. They arrived at the camp together, um, and obviously with Talia as well, who has now gone and joined the hunt. So she will always be a fifteen-year-old girl. She'll never she'll never age, and everything. Kind of kind of taking Zoe's Zoe's place. Um, in the hunt and that she's happy she's really you know great and everything but having her there as well really affected Luke um, and how he saw all this situation of everything that was going on so it was yeah it was very interesting now you're seeing more of a human side to Luke which you know is really great to see but and uh, we'll see how that plays out in the next couple of books so I'm going to stop there. So because um, <laughs> I've been talking for about 15 minutes now, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to be making a separate video about the next book I'll be reading, which of course will be the next Percy Jackson book. Um, but yeah, I'll do that separately. Um, but have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think of it. Um, if you have, if you want to tell me what you thought of it, you can leave me a comment in the comment box below. Or if you want to show what you thought in other ways, you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Entirely up to you. But I'd love to hear what you thought of this book and uh, I'll be back soon with a separate video about the next book I'm reading for next week. See ya!